We're joined now by Mitch Krebs. He's uh, the CEO of Per Delane. Very nice to have you nice. here, Mitch. We have, we're going to go into break in just a minute. But I do want to ask you very quickly, overnight there was a development with gold margins and an increase, a 22% increase in the margins mm -hmm. that need to be held against futures. How much of an impact should that have on gold market, or what were you expecting this morning? You know, we're seeing about a $50 an ounce pullback on gold this morning as a result primarily of that. We saw something similar in silver a few months ago when the CME increased margin requirements about five times in two weeks. So I think this will cause you know a, a brief pullback. You think this is going to be a brief pullback? Where do you see us at the end of the year? I see us continuing to march ahead to the 2000 and above mark with everything going on in Europe and here in the U.S. and the fiscal situation. Over the 2000 mark, you're yeah. saying, by year end. All right, you just reported your second quarter earnings, right, back on August 8th. You had a great quarter. Explain this, though. You don't hedge your gold and silver positions, and all we've seen with gold is one day after another of record-setting highs. Why is your stock down year to date? Why are we not necessarily seeing the mining stocks move in line with the underlying metals? Yeah, it's a good question, and it's a frustration for the, the sector. The equities have not kept up with the metals year to date. Both silver and gold are up about 25%. Uh, year to date, most of the sector is up zero to maybe five percent year to date. I think a lot of that has to do with the analysts not really pricing in this price deck into their valuations of the uh, of the uh, of the equities. And I think as we hold these price levels longer and people have more confidence in these prices long term, the valuations will start to come back and flow, money will flow back into the equities. Are you actively working on a number of exploration projects at this point? We are, yeah. We're doing everything we can to exploit the current price environment as quickly as we can. And one of the best places to do that is an exploration around our existing mines. We just announced a 67% increase in our exploration expenditures in the second half of this year to do exactly that, primarily around our mine in Mexico, one in Argentina, and one in Nevada. Let me ask you, we've been seeing this sort of safe haven trade, this flight to safety trade, definitely having an impact in gold, and perhaps argue same effect there on silver. When that goes away, is the fundamental demand worldwide there to keep these prices high? On the silver side, about half of demand is industrial. Uh, so it's a very broad, broad and diverse set of uses for silver, aside from the investment demand. that's clearly been the big fuel here over the last few years. But on the, on the industrial demand side, we're seeing a lot of new uses. We're seeing a lot of increase in those applications and consumption, especially in the developing uh, economies of the world. Electronics is one of the biggest uses for silver, uh, television, cell phones. In terms of metals, silver has the most number of end uses of any metal. All right, we're going to leave it there. Mitchell, thank you so much Thanks. for joining us.